Hello guys, before we start this video, I just want to say thank you very much for all your support and just give a big welcome to all the new subscribers. In this new video, I'm going to talk about the cardiac output and how to obtain the cardiac output in echocardiography. I hope you enjoy this video, so let's start. What is the cardiac output? Cardiac output is the amount of blood the heart pumps in a minute and it is dependent on the heart rate, contractility, preload and afterload. Understanding of the applicability and practical relevance of each of these four components is important when interpreting cardiac output values. Cardiac output expressed in liters per minute is the amount of blood the heart pumps in a minute. Cardiac output is logically equal to the product of the stroke volume and the number of beats per minute. The effective volume of blood expelled by either ventricle of the heart per unit of time it usually refers to the left ventricle output. Normal values are 4 to 8 liters per minute. Easy enough, one might think, but the term cardiac in cardiac output is potentially misleading. Sometimes assuming that to interpret cardiac output, they must focus on the heart. The heart is just one part of the much larger cardiovascular system and the amount of blood it pumps is dependent on both cardiac and extracardiac factors. So the four determinants of cardiac output are heart rate, contractility, preload and afterload. The heart rate is the speed at which the heart beats. The heart rate is perhaps the simplest determinant of cardiac output to visualize. The faster the heart beats, the more blood can be pumped over a particular period of time. To understand the role of the heart rate in the cardiac output, let's use the bicycle analogy. The faster the cyclist pedals, the faster the bicycle will go, but things sometimes are not quite so simple. Staying with the bicycle analogy, it is easy to imagine that if the cyclist pedals too fast for too long, he or she will get tired and be unable to maintain the rate of pedaling, so the bicycle will slow. All this is because there is an optimal rate of pedaling. Too fast and the cyclist will tire too quickly and have to slow down. Too slow and the bicycle will not move fast enough to cover the required distance. Similarly, if the heart rate is too slow, like in the case of a severe bradyarrhythmia, or is too fast, then the cardiac output can be impaired. Acute supraventricular or ventricular tachycardia may also be a cause of low cardiac output and even of cardiogenic shock. Another important component of the cardiac output is the contractility. Clearly, if the cyclist flexes the muscles a little and pushes harder on the pedals, then the bicycle will move faster. 
This can be compared to an increased contractility of the heart muscle resulting in increased cardiac output. Too little pedal power or impaired contractility will reduce cardiac output. However, too much effort will result in fatigue, sometimes leading to a complete collapse. With the need to slow down substantially or even to stop, this may occur with excessive inotropic support. The next one is the preload. Preload is the degree of myocardial distension prior to shortening. An intrinsic property of myocardial cells is that the force of their contraction depends on the length of which they are stretched. The greater the stretch within certain limits, the greater the force of contraction. An increase in the distension of the ventricle will therefore result in an increase in the force of contraction, which will increase cardiac output. Preload largely depends on the amount of ventricular filling. It should not, however, be confused with the venous return. Our last component is the afterload. Afterload is the force against which the ventricles must act in order to eject blood and is largely dependent on the arterial blood pressure and vascular tone. By cycling on a large smooth road rather than a narrow bumpy one or on a road with a gentle downhill slope, the bicycle's speed can increase significantly for a given degree of muscular effort. Similarly, reducing afterload can increase cardiac output, especially in conditions where contractility is impaired. Now that we know what is the cardiac output and all that involves, how can we calculate the cardiac output? The first thing we need to focus on when trying to calculate cardiac output is figuring out what the stroke volume is. This just involves estimating the amount of blood that comes out of the ventricle at the left ventricular outflow tract. So, the stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out of the left ventricle of the heart during each systolic cardiac contraction. Not all the blood that fills the heart by the end of diastole can be ejected from the heart during systole. However, the volume left in the heart at the end of systole is the end systolic volume. The stroke volume refers to the volume of blood ejected per beat from the left or right ventricle and we all know that increases at maximal exercise. The stroke volume is not all the blood contained in the left ventricle. Normally, only about two-thirds of the blood in the ventricle is expelled with each beat. The normal range is 50 to 100 milliliters. So, what is the stroke volume formula? The stroke volume may be calculated as the difference between the left ventricular end diastolic volume and the left ventricular end systolic volume. So, to calculate the stroke volume, we need the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume.
However, the stroke volume also can be calculated as the product of the velocity time integral of the flow signal obtained with pulse wave Doppler at a given site and the cross-sectional area of the same site obtained from the diameter measured by in mid-systole two-dimensional echocardiography. This means that to measure the stroke volume with this formula we need the LVOT VTI and the LVOT diameter. Now that we know a few ways to obtain the stroke volume, what is the cardiac output formula? The cardiac output it is equal to the stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. This means that to obtain the cardiac output you need the stroke volume and the heart rate. In conclusion, for the cardiac output and stroke volume calculation, therefore you need the following. First, the LVOT VTI. Second, the LVOT diameter. And third, the heart rate. I will show you how to measure this in echocardiography in three simple steps. Step 1. Measure the LVOT diameter at the parasternal long axis view. Zoom in the image to be more accurate. If you want to know how to properly measure the LVOT, I have a video about this in my YouTube channel. So have a look. Step 2. Measure the LVOT VTI using pulse wave Doppler in the apical 5 chamber view. To obtain the VTI, you just have to trace around the LVOT flow. The LVOT velocity time integral provides information regarding blood velocity across the time period of systole and it is in the units of centimeters. Typical values are close to 2 centimeters. And the last step is step number 3. Measure the heart rate. The last step in calculating the cardiac output will be to just get the heart rate. You can use the heart rate from the patient monitor. If calculating the heart rate using the ultrasound machine, press the heart rate function and just place the cursor from one peak of a wave to another peak. And the machine should automatically calculate the heart rate for you. However, remember there is another way of calculating the stroke volume. You can use the left ventricular volumes to obtain the stroke volume. You will need the end of diastolic volume and the end of systolic volume. You can easily obtain these volumes by measuring the ejection fraction by Simpson's method. Another way of obtaining the left ventricular end of diastolic and end of systolic volumes is by measuring the ejection fraction by Tichholz method. Or just simply by measuring the left ventricular diastolic diameter and the left ventricular systolic diameter. The machine will calculate everything for you. This means that you can obtain the stroke volume by three different methods. Measuring the left ventricular volumes, measuring the left ventricular diameters 
or just by measuring the LVOT VTI and LVOT diameter. Now that you know how to obtain the cardiac output and stroke volume, you can also calculate the cardiac output and stroke volume index. If you divide the cardiac output by the body surface area, you will get the cardiac index. If you divide the stroke volume by the body surface area, you will get the stroke volume index. Now let's talk about of some of the pitfalls you may encounter. The LVOT VTI may not be accurate when the rhythm is irregular as in atrial fibrillation. In this case, one should average the VTIs of several beats, approximately 5 to 10. Also, the LVOT diameter, if off by a little, can introduce significant error in output values since the radius is a square. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye!